Welcome to the Power Blog site. Last night's radiation alert in South Bend, Indiana. I think they probably should have really used this unit. This is a, a good old fashioned com block uh, radiation detector uh, designed to be peasant proof. It'd be the type of thing I think, uh, given last night's reading in South Bend, Indiana, that uh, might want to hook up to the private radiation monitoring networks. It has three settings. It goes off on a radiation detection settings of crying, frying, and dying. Good old com block simple. Well tonight we're going to discuss uh, this radiation detection in uh, South Bend, how to uh, weed out uh, false detections from uh, true detections and uh, what our concerns about this detection is or was. Uh, first of all, uh, here's a map of uh, one of the uh, uh, detecting networks, uh, Black Cat Systems. Uh, one thing we like about this site, uh, they, have a f they have fewer detection networks, but if you click on them, you actually get a graph of the uh, radiation reading. Now this says in counts per minute here, and this is the time, and this is the actual graph of the uh, of the radiation monitor in South Bend that went off looks like about uh, three to four thousand times over background radiation sorry three to four hundred times over background radiation uh, the reading started looks like right around uh, 1130 on uh, June 6 is when it started and if you notice here, the levels are increasing. So it, it doesn't hit peak immediately. It uh, goes up and increases and then peaks out. And so this is about, uh, looks like uh, 1 a.m. the next morning on June 7th. And then it drops down for just a little bit. And then it comes back up to about the same peak level. And you can see here it didn't stay at the peak, but it uh, transitioned upwards and then back downwards. And then if you notice here, right about 4 a.m. in the morning on June 7th, yeah, it went back to normal. So parts of this uh, do look like a real detection. Even though for an airborne detection, the detection level seems very high, it still has the... Uh, the markings of a real detection with a uh, an increase and then a holding and then another decrease didn't flatline all the way across now so the next question is as well what was the wind flow like what was the jet stream so we pulled up the jet stream for the same time period and interesting enough we can't get the, the jet stream for the exact time period so we're going to be on six hours on either side of it uh, this is from approximately uh, 6 p.m. in the evening on uh, June 6th. So let's see what time this was again. Yeah, June 6th and 7th. So this is approximately 6 p.m. on uh, June 6th. This is a UTC time. And so South Bend, Indiana is right in here. Now you can see it's at the termination edge of the jet stream and that's from where the high winds drop down to lower speed winds. So that's a location where one might expect fallout to, uh, to occur in the absence of rain. So we'll step forward to the next time step which is uh, 6 a.m. in the morning on uh, June 7th and you can see the jet stream has dropped just a little bit south of uh, South Bend. So the jet stream was there to drop fallout on that location. But uh, another key thing to look at, again for the time frame, which was approximately 11.30 p.m. on uh, June 6th to 4 a.m. on June 7th, is uh, to look at the, uh, the wind flows for uh, that time period. Now what we've done up here is we've pulled up the actual weather data for uh, South Bend, Indiana. And this side over here we have uh, June 6th up until midnight. And then uh, here we start on this side 
June 7th up into midnight. Now here's the key thing to watch. This detection started right around 1130 and we have uh, decreasing winds and the winds are, if you can see here, out of the north. Now what's the next thing that happens at midnight? The winds drop to nothing. There is no wind speed from about 1 to 4 o'clock. So that means it was dead calm there. So this detection basically aligns very well with the uh, wind speed dropping out to nothing. That would allow fallout to basically float in that area and not leave. And then when the wind speed picks up to about 5 miles an hour around 4 o'clock, the wind also changes direction. It was north earlier in the evening. You'll see there's no uh, wind direction here because the wind wasn't blowing. But then when the wind started blowing at 4 o'clock, it switched to the west. So, it's very interesting in, in that uh, this detection matches that time frame perfectly. Wind comes to a stop, detection levels skyrocket, wind starts back up, changes diff direction, and uh, uh, detection levels drop to uh, near nothing. So this has the markings at this point of a real detection. Now, fortunately, uh, one of the commentators on uh, the uh, Potter Blog site lives in South Bend and was aware of this going on and was taking readings of his uh, uh, with his radiation monitor, and, I, and that's the key thing. You know, prior to Fukushima, there were very very few people out there who could uh, risk mediate, risk mitigate radioactive incidents and uh, have the equipment to know what to do for themselves without basically relying on others. Um, one of the reasons you're aware of this site is because we were probably one of the two people in the country who had that capability, us and uh, EnviroReporter.com. And we were one of the two people in the country, groups that were actually willing to speak up. We speak up because we seek for other people to share information back with us so that we can improve our own risk mitigation. And that's why we appreciate uh, Nemo and everybody else who gives us their findings. Now the other interesting thing about this detection is it uh, occurred uh, during our maximum alert about the jet stream. All across the entire width of this country, uh, actually of North America, along the jet stream there have been very high readings, uh, airborne readings very high too. Now they've, uh, as we warned, there have now been high readings in, uh, in England. So there's lots of things coming around to say that this might be a, uh, a uh, real detection. Now, the high level of it, 300 times background, almost 400 times background for an airborne reading, you know, that uh, draws our scrutiny. And at a gut instinct level, we say, well, I don't know if we believe that so much. But uh, all the indications are, at least from what we could determine, that it, uh, it has the air of realism about it. Now, uh, since then, it's come out that this was a, uh, it's been said that this was a false alarm. And uh, it was somehow related, it's very roughly explained that it was related to a ground fault interrupt uh, outlet and UPS power supply that was powering this Geiger counter. Now, if that's the case, then this type of scenario ought to be repeatable. They should be able to repeat this failure mode, make it happen again and verify it. We don't know what kind of Geiger counter this was. Hopefully if it was a uh, Geiger counter made by the uh, Black Cat Systems people, uh, they'd have some more insight into what was going on here and what might have caused this failure mode. But it's uh, very, very interesting from that perspective. Uh, again, our gut feel is that, uh, is that it uh, was not a, a spontaneous event. But could be wrong. Nobody knows. But it is wise to uh, keep your alert levels up. Uh, hopefully the key things people have taken away is that uh, when things like this do happen, it pays to have your own capability to uh, make your own wise choices. Uh, as we mentioned, uh, at least uh, Nemo in South Bend had some equipment 
and he was able to make he or she was able to make their own decisions about uh, uh, what they needed to do, and uh, they didn't detect anything that would indicate that they needed to do anything. Now, what we don't know about this detection is uh, is if how large it was. We know it was very hot. Was it a small detection? If it was a small detection, then one could picture at four o'clock this the radiation from this cloud to started to, to disperse to the east at uh, five miles an hour, and uh, one would envision the uh, same way low-hanging smoke might disperse in a slow wind. If it was a, a large uh, cloud, then one would expect uh, a, a large detection that other people in South Bend who were looking would detect it. But that's the thing about fallout and radioactivity. It, sometimes it's spotty. It can happen one place and not happen the other. But uh, again, we believe this was a, uh, a not quote unquote real event, but it uh, bears uh, uh, further investigation into uh, what was happening there. And uh, on that note, we just thought we'd give you a quick preview of the uh, analysis that we're doing on uh, lab tests of uh, pre-Fukushima ground beef and uh, peaks that were in range uh, versus the uh, 7 2011 uh, uh, butchered ground beef and uh, the detections in it. Uh, the short of, short of it is we had this detected we had this work done by a professional lab. Uh, in total it cost us roughly sixteen hundred dollars to do this work. Uh, fortunately through kind donations on the internet of trusting people uh, they covered the uh, pre-detection uh, pre-Fukushima beef uh, measurements which cost around 430 we got like 416 in donations and we're working on testing a uh, brand new batch of uh, ground beef that w went to the butcher here at the end of May and so that ground beef that cow was living off of uh, Fukushima fallout for at least a year and at least a year now year and a half uh, the one prime takeaway uh, nothing over the uh, minimum detectable levels was detected in the pre-Fukushima beef. In the uh, post-Fukushima beef by four months, uh, cesium-137 was detected uh, above uh, minimum detectable levels, approximately, uh, I think, uh, 0.7 uh, becquerels per kilogram. So if you want to see more food testing and you want to know the truth, uh, please donate at the Potter Blog site. And... Uh, Again, if we uh, need to have more robust uh, Soviet technology that uh, fails less but gives you less information, this is the thing we need to hook up to the radiation network and the uh, Black Cat Systems Network. Good night.